bad haircuts. There is nothing worse than when your barber just randomly decides to destroy your self-confidence with some goofy ass haircut. And as someone who has never found a barber who consistently does me nicely, I have gotten my shit all the way fucked up on many occasions. I'm talking not going to school, locking myself in my room so nobody can see me with this disgraceful cut type of fucked up. And these barbers are out here having the audacity to ask, do you like it? Man, do I like it? Yeah, yeah, bro. I, I love it, bro. <laughs> Thank you so much. Man, I just be wiping the tears away and then tipping them nicely. Knowing damn well I should be out here throwing hands because this dude is the reason I can't get any bitches. So I've tried lots of different barbers in my time, starting with the ones my mom used to take me to. I mean, this early, I never really even had a say on what I wanted my hair to look like. So uh, what are you looking for today? Uh, You know, just a little bit off the top, please. Shave it. Wait, wait, what? Shave it. Your new haircut looks so good, buddy. <laughs> Thanks. Hey man, you know your haircut is ass when your mom says she likes it. As a kid, I always dreaded getting haircuts because I knew my barber was already like 0 for 10. And I would show up to school every time knowing it was inevitable that I was about to get my shit flamed. And truthfully, there is no worse roasting than when you get a bad haircut. Like people you barely even know will be out here cooking you. Who the fuck is this? All of a sudden, people got more jokes than Chris Rock. And it's even worse when you decide, I should get a fresh cut because school's starting back up and I'm trying to look fresh. Bro, I can't go to school like this. Yo, Chains, what's up? Yo, what's good? Bro, bro, are you all right? Why do you, why do you got this hoodie on? Yeah, yeah, I'm chilling. I'm, I'm just kind of cold, you know? Bro, it's 32 degrees. And man, there was this one time that I still think about every time I fall asleep. Me and my friend go to this barbershop that I'd been to once before. And last time, they did me quite nicely. So we head in. I sit down in the chair. Hey, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. Uh, have you been here before? Yeah, yeah, I have actually. Oh, I remember you. Same cut as last time? Yeah, exactly, exactly. So what's new, man? Uh, nothing much, really. What about you? You know, I I've just been working. Oh, yeah, re respect, respect. So, uh, how's your dad doing? This is when I knew something was terribly wrong. Bro, I don't got a dad. Oh, Fuck! Y you know, he he's good. This motherfucker was giving me some random kid's haircut. This dude must have thought I was Manny or some shit. Because he gave me that middle part cut. And he pushed my hairline back a little bit. And everyone in my city knew this barber. So everyone at my school followed his Instagram too. Can I can I get a picture from my Instagram? Nah, bro. I don't I don't really like being posted. Don't don't worry, it's quick, it's quick. Nah, I, I don't really want to. This dude caught me lacking so bad and broadcasted it to everyone in my city. Fuck bro, I, I should throw hands with him right now. I gotta get it back in blood. So do you like the cut? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I I do. <laughs> And when I checked my Instagram, I was out here getting flamed so hard. Borderline cyberbullying. And I'm not joking when I say this. This motherfucker fucked me up so bad. I learned how to cut my own hair and never went back to a barber ever again. Man, smoking too much. Greening out. ODing on the devil's lettuce. Whatever you'd like to call it. Many of us have been there at least once in our lifetime. And man, I'll be the first to say it is not fun. But I do actually have a funny story about my first time greening out. I, I mean, it's funny now, but when it happened, I was shitting myself. So this story dates way back when I was just a young jit. I was still in eighth grade. And man, don't ask me why, but it takes place on a Thursday on a school night. All right, so it's a Thursday at 7 p.m. My friends and I are just headed to this girl's house. We'll call her Mary. So when me and my friends arrive at Mary's house, I quickly find out her dad is pretty chill. <coughs> Yo, what's up? And you know, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. So we'll just say Mary was no stranger smoking some gas now and then. With that being said, I kinda was. I had only smoked a few times. And the times that I had smoked, it wasn't anything crazy. So walking into the Mary household, I could kinda tell we were gonna smoke. So we all just went to her room and talked for about 5 minutes until all my friends started smoking. And it was out of some strangely shaped water bottle I had never seen before. And listen bro, it was a Thursday on a school night so I wasn't really planning on smoking, right? But when you're in middle school, peer pressure just hits differently bro. So there my dumbass was on a Thursday night using this weirdly shaped water bottle for the first time. Knowing that I had a curfew of 9 o'clock. And I just instantly started coughing. 
I was definitely the least experienced out of all my friends, so I remember my homies were kind of helping me out, especially my homie Bob. Bob brought me some water and told me to let him know if it hits too hard. I told him yeah for sure, but I'm pretty sure I'm chilling, because it had already been a few minutes at this point and it was safe to say I didn't feel anything. And after 10 minutes, I remember thinking, I bet I'm definitely good by now. I probably just didn't have enough to actually get me high. So shit, maybe I can make it back for my 9 o'clock curfew after all. That shit hit me like Mike Tyson in his prime, bro. I don't know why no one told me this new device would have me slump like Nate Robinson. But it's already too late at this point. My vision started to get choppy. It's like I was running 30 frames per second in real life. And of course, the dry eyes starts to kick in, and I just get really hot out of nowhere. And I guess at this point, Bob could just see the panic in my face. So Bob was like, come with me, and he brought me to the bathroom. And bro was prepared. He threw down a pillow and a blanket and was just like, you're gonna be alright, bro. And as he leaves me in the dark in the bathroom, I can hear from the other room, he's definitely greening out. He's greening? Nah, not chains. Nah, my boy. Rest in peace. Rest in peace? Bro, am I about to die right now? But to be honest, my brain was way too fried to even care. The effects were getting worse by the minute. And as I laid there in the dark on Mary's bathroom floor, I felt my soul leave my body. I was just flying around space and, you know, traveling through the galaxy and shit. But I'm brought back to life because I felt my phone buzzing. And when I woke back up, I had no clue where I was. And then when I looked in the mirror, who the fuck is this guy? While I was out here putting the pieces together, trying to figure out who I am, Bob hits me with another, come with me. I got a ride so we can get you back home. But you have to act normal, okay? Uh... Okay, just get in the car. It was his older sister driving. And when I got in the car, I was stressing. A act, act cool, bro. Act cool, act cool. Hi, how are you? I'm not high. Fuck, she knows. And the rest of the ride was just pretty much silent. I got out of the car and I stumbled all the way over to the front door. At this point, I was praying my mom was asleep. So I called my brother to open the front door. What's up? Uh, door, door. At this point, I'm malfunctioning. I'm trying to explain what is happening to my brother and it pretty much just went like this. Bro, it, is mom awake? Bro, holy, you're gone, bruh. I'm sorry, but this, this is the only way, huh? What the hell, bruh? I'm not gonna lie, the smack low-key woke me up a little bit. But still, I was way too big to be saved. But at least mom isn't awake. Chains, get up here right now. I'm fucked. The jig is up, bro. I slowly walk up the stairs to my inevitable doom. Still high off my ass. I walk into my mom's room and seal my fate. Yeah, bro, I got grounded for a year and a half. And when I woke up to go to school the next day, I was still baked as hell. So a few years ago, I worked at a fast food restaurant. We'll just call it Jim Jordan's, you know what I'm saying? Jim Jordan's was my first job ever. So coming in on my first day, I was kind of excited, you know, because it was just overall a new experience. So I was looking forward to it. So I walked through the doors and, you know, it's looking like a nice establishment so far. But as soon as you step past the staff gate, you realize it's instantly a hellhole. Like this is exactly what it was like. Hi there, can I take your order? Yo, who's medium double talking? double. Hi, hello. What's your order? Yo, Hi, hello. Hi, it's medium it's double my double. first Hi, day. Hi, there, can I take your order? And bro, once they give you the Tim... <clears throat> I mean, once they give you the Jim Jordan's drip, you instantly lose value as a human, bro. For example, if you're going for a casual stroll down the street, an average interaction would look something like this. Hey, hey, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. You know, just average small talk things. But once you throw on that Jim Jordan's drip, hey, what can I get for medium black coffee? Make my coffee faster, bitch. And while I was working here, it was just the beginning of the pandemic. Meaning on top of the gym drip, you also had to wear a mask. So pretty much people could just see your eyes. And trying to communicate during the pandemic was horrible. Because not only did both parties have to wear a mask, there was this big plastic wall between us. And they had to stand six feet away. Hi, what can I get for you? What? 
I said, hi, what can- Huh? Ma'am, what can I get for you? Oh, I'm good. Thanks for asking. Oh my god, bro. Oh, hey. And man, I already made a video on NPCs, but working in any sort of drive through you'll figure out that drive throughs are NPCs' prime real estate. It's just like back to back to back NPCs. And when you don't have your average NPC, you'll have a below average IQ NPC. Like there was this one lady that would come through every day and all my coworkers knew her as the coupon lady because every day she would try and use coupons but somehow never understand how they work. All right, your total is 1567. Uh, okay, I'm gonna use a coupon. All right. Uh, what are you waiting for? Uh, the, the coupon? Oh, it's just at my house. And don't get me started on my manager, Magnus, bro. Next time I see Magnus, it's on site. Wait a minute, James, is that is that you? The longer I worked there, Magnus just started getting a little bit too comfortable on booking my shifts. After about 10 months of working there, she just decided to give me 5 a.m. shifts every time. And that wasn't even in my availability. So, you know, I would send a polite and professional email. And she would just hit me with some shit like, okay. Then just continue to book me at 5 a.m., bro. So I ended up working there for about a year and a half. And like most people at minimum wage jobs, when you're there for long enough, you just start to care a lot less about getting fired. I mean, I was snatching donuts, whipping myself up some food whenever no one was looking and hooking up all my homies with free everything. And eventually I just got tired of waking up at 4.30 every shift. So I put in my two weeks. And during these last two weeks, I did not give a fudge cake, bro. I was out here setting up coffee cups and playing basketball with the gym bits. And if someone was kind of polite to me, I would just hook them up with a free donut. And I remember on my last day, I was working a night shift and it was just about 15 minutes before I got off forever. And some dudes rolled up in the drive-thru baked as hell. Hey, Hey dude, can you check how much is on this gift card really quick? Yeah, you got you got 21 cents on it. Uh what can we get for 21 cents? One sec. I just went to the back and cleared the shelves of every single donut in sight. And I just sauced them all for free. Yo, thank you so much, dude. You're the GOAT. Can't believe this cost 20. So yeah, that was my experience working fast food, and it's definitely not fun, but I feel like it's a valuable experience. Because now that I know I hate working there so much, I'm gonna work hard enough so you will never catch me working in fast food ever again, bro. Yo, really quick, I wanted to say this video is inspired by Mostly True, the 7 levels of high video. If you haven't seen it already, go check it out. And I'm not the most experienced smoker, but I generally have three stages of being high. The first stage is BAKED. At this level, you'll start to feel some of the usual effects like having a dry mouth or dry eyes, but you're still like a normal functioning member of society. It'll make you a little bit happier than usual, It'll make you a little bit more relaxed. But you know that voice in your head that talks whenever you think? It's like it gives that voice a microphone. Your thoughts pretty much just become louder and kind of more important in a way. But one of the major side effects that will hit you at this stage is munchies. You're gonna have the urgent desire to absolutely annihilate your cabinet. Your appetite is crazy, but all the food gets like a power up. A $2 junior chicken from McDonald's becomes a delicacy, bro. And on God, I'm not fat, but when I'm baked, I can eat like 10 of them. And that brings me to stage two, faded. As soon as you're faded, your thoughts ascend to a different realm of thinking, bro. It's like being baked, except everything is more. Like, the munchies increase. The dry mouth gets drier. And your eyes get more red and more dry. At this point, it's like, when you're at the dentist, and you know they use that little vacuum thing to suck all the, like, moisture out of your mouth. And then you're left, like, with your mouth just dry as fuck. And you're kind of just sitting there, like... And if when you're baked, it's like your thoughts got a microphone. Now it's like you gave your thoughts like a megaphone with big ass speakers. I want hot Cheetos. At this point, a lot of people get paranoid, especially if you're in a public setting because you're just trying to act as normal as possible, but you're just not a normal functioning member of society at this point. Now, if you were going really crazy, you might make it to stage three. And now I do have to reiterate. That for stage three especially, this is just my experience. Now with that being said, 
Stage 3. Schlumped. Your soul and essence has fully ascended. The real world is nothing but noise. You truly and fully ascended into the astral plane. You are one with the planets. You are one with the sun. You are one with the universe. Now after that shit, you're probably going to feel high for like the next week at least. Personally, I would not recommend this stage because I definitely lost some brain cells from that experience. But shit, bro. Maybe there was just something else in the weed. Everyone has encountered countless NPCs during their lives. Like, you know, the people that just spawned in. They didn't have any character development or anything. And to be honest, when you leave their vicinity, they probably just despawn. If you still have no clue what an NPC is, it's a non-playable character. They're like the type of people you could sock in the face and they'd say some NPC ass line like, hey! And I know at least some NPCs have to exist. Cause let's be real, there is no way all 7 billion people on this planet have whole lives from start to finish. That just doesn't add up. And I don't know if any of you guys have ever noticed this, but NPCs all have a spot they go to just do NPC things, bro. For example, if you go to Walmart, that's their natural habitat. You are bound to see at least 15 NPCs at Walmart. And usually the NPCs are trying to avoid eye contact. But if you've ever tried interacting with them, you'll know they always have the most predictable and neutral responses possible. Like whoever programmed them should have spiced it up a little bit, you know what I'm saying? They could have made them tell jokes or something, I don't know. But anyways, I used to work at a summer camp where you teach little kids to ride bikes. And through this experience, I realized that pretty much all young kids are NPCs. And I guess it's just because they haven't been alive long enough to actually go through the character development. But working at this summer camp made me realize there's no way these kids have a thought process. Hey buddy, what's wrong? I dropped my rock. Here you go. But I guess little kids still aren't even at the stage of having full consciousness. And honestly, they kind of have that caveman mindset. Eat something. But I mean, you can't really blame them because they've only been alive for a few years. But still, as a non-NPC, I'd like to believe I was never participating in these NPC activities as a kid. I refuse to believe I was out here spending my time doing this. But yeah, man, I really just want to know if there's any NPCs watching this right now. If there is, just just fess up, bro. Because I don't even know if NPCs be on YouTube or, or if they just like despawn before they can do that. But regardless, if you're an NPC or not, thank you for watching this video. Subscribe. <clears throat> All right, class, today we're going outside for a run. It's literally zero degrees. Oh, Chains, don't be a bitch. It's not even that cold. See, I told you guys it's not even that cold. Yeah, for you. Cause you're out here dressed like the Michelin man. High school PE is something different. And every PE class has five different types of people. Like the group of kids who just stand in the corner and occasionally get sniped in the head with a dodgeball. Or the kids who participate and make sure everyone is included. Or the legend who's chilling on Instagram. <clears throat> he uh, he follows ch at Chains for real. <clears throat> There's also the dude who just never shows up, and of course we got the sweats. These motherfuckers treat PE like they're in the military. These motherfuckers treat PE like they're training for the Olympics. These motherfuckers treat PE like they're gonna get scouted to the league, which is honestly just funny as hell. Because let's be honest, 85.7% of the class doesn't even want to be there. So you'll have some innocent souls zoning out during a basketball game, and all of a sudden they'll be getting posterized like they're playing against Ja Morant. Yeah, bitch! I mean, these kids will come out of PE drenched in sweat, breathing heavy, and with a smile on their face, knowing they dropped 104 points on some kids who have never touched a basketball in their life. And listen, don't hate me, but I do understand the appeal of sweating your balls off in PE. Because I too once participated in the sweaty activities. Oh, Ow. Ow. I know, I know, but there's just something so exhilarating about hearing the snapping of an unsuspecting freshman's ankles. But as I matured, I realized there was only one thing better than shitting on random students. And that was shitting on sweats. 
I became the anti-sweat. I would act like an innocent soul waiting to get posterized. But when the sweat would come in trying to end my career with a windmill dunk, I stuffed that boy like a Thanksgiving turkey. Pause. And don't get me started on the, the fit fitness grand pacer. Whoever created this legal form of torture will catch these hands. Oh, Chains, no, no, I, I heard he sadly passed away a little while ago. You could be having a good day and you pull up to PE like, Hey bro, you know what we're doing today? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure, but I think we're playing soccer. The fitness no, it, it can't be. Alright class, today we will be doing the beep test. Fuck. Woo. <coughs> damn, damn, what was I at? Uh, ch chains, uh, what, we haven't even started. That was, uh, that was just our warm up. But one thing that did bring me a little bit of joy was looking at everyone during the push up section. Like, there was always some dude doing the neck push ups, some dude who thinks he's Mike Tyson, <laughs> the guy who takes breaks when the teacher isn't watching, and there was always at least one dude who was out here looking like he was hitting it raw. Uh, James, I, I, I don't think that's how you do it. Oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah, bitch! Awkward conversations. We all know them, and we all hate them. Hey, how are you? Oh, I'm good, how are you? I'm great, how are you? You, you're, you already asked me that. Damn, you right. You, you right. You right. So, uh, uh, how's your day going? My pet frog just died. Damn, that's tough. I find myself taking the most inconvenient routes to avoid an awkward conversation. Like, I can't really explain the feeling of an awkward conversation, but it's just mildly uncomfortable. Like, I would compare the discomfort levels of an awkward conversation to wearing wet socks. Like, it's not the end of the world, but let's keep it real, no one wants to wear wet socks. And honestly, I would take a slightly inconvenient path if it meant I would not have to wear wet socks. Also, I feel like there's some other situations that are in the awkward conversation family that I also hate. For example, the handshake fist bump dilemma. Yeah, uh, it was nice seeing you. Yeah. Oh, fist bump. Oh. Oh, oh no, sorry, nah, sorry. Nah. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, oh, no, I don't know. Uh, yeah, yeah. God Fuck. damn it. After you experience one of these bad boys, you'll be thinking about it cringing for the next hour. And if you're anything like me, you might even lose some sleep over it. Man, why the fuck they're not going for the handshake, bruh? Obviously it was a handshake. And what about the good old you said goodbye to the person you're talking to, but you guys both walk the same way situation. I mean, this situation is the perfect way to ruin a smooth conversation. Yeah, man, it was really nice to see you. Yeah, for sure. See you later, bro. All right, peace out. <clears throat> uh, all right, all right, bye. Uh, yeah, bye. Shit, we're still walking the same way? I'll just turn this way so it's not awkward. Man, what the fuck? And even if I say goodbye to someone and we're still in the same general location, I will avoid them at all costs. Like once me and my brother were chilling at Walmart and we saw one of our neighbors. So we talked for a little bit, you know, said our farewells and went separate ways. But when it came time for me and my brother to check out, we saw the same neighbors checking out. And we were up in the Walmart looking like we were playing Assassin's Creed in real life. It's clear, it's clear. And of course, I can't forget about awkward silence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Uh... <clears throat> Me personally, I have some procedures in place to avoid awkward silence no matter what. For example, my philosophy is to just say things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Uh, so do you do you play Minecraft? What kind of question is that? In the end, they may think I'm a dumbass, but at least there's no awkward silence. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> Listen, I am no criminal. In fact, I would consider myself a good Samaritan. Type of dude who helps grandmas cross the street. Type of dude who might even pick up some trash now and then. And absolutely not the type of dude to go to jail. Now, I know for a fact I would never go to jail. 
Not, not because I never break the law, but because I'm fast as fuck. In the streets, they used to call me Usain Jr., bro. So there was no way you would catch me getting arrested by some 50-year-old man with a beer belly and a donut in his hand. I would be out here crossing bro up, hit him with a little body faint, leave him in the ER bro. But with that being said, I needed that speed. I needed that speed to get out of all the dumbass situations I put myself in. Cause I'm still no valedictorian, but back in grade 9, I was nominated stupidest dumbass. And all the runner ups were my homies. So evidently we had some stupid ass ideas. Like I remember this one time we were all looking for something to do. And if you're from a small boring city like mine, you would know there's not many fun things to do besides smoke and break the law. So what did we do? We, we smoked. And, th and then we broke the law. This story takes place at Billy's crib. So it's just me, Billy, and Bob. We're chilling playing PlayStation or whatever. And Billy's like, damn, I'm, I'm bored as hell. We should go do something. Yeah, facts. What's something fun we could do? Shit, we could have some girls over. We got no hoes, bruh. Holeless. Shit, I forgot about that. I mean, we could get some food. You got money? You're broke, bitch. Damn, damn, you're right. Wait, wait, we could smoke. You got grass? Yeah, yeah, I, I do actually. Oh, oh shit, bet. So we all go outside, roll up the grass, and get baked. Then we go back inside and hop back on the PlayStation. Damn, I'm low-key still bored. Yeah, let's have some girls who still have no hoes, bro. Fuck. I mean, we could have a bonfire. Oh shit, that's Ooh, not a bad idea. Genius. So you think this is a good place? Nah, it's too out in the open. What about here? Nah, it's too close to the school. What about here? Oh shit, th this is kinda nice. So we were looking around, we gathered up the best sticks to build the fire, and we set them up quite nicely. We lathered those bad boys in some gasoline, and apparently my high ass didn't know how fire and gas worked. So I leaned over the fire, and when I go to light it, for a second my life flashed before my eyes. So I quickly jumped back, but my friends and I are baked to perfection. So they're like, yo, dude, are, are you good? Yeah, man, I think so. Are my eyebrows still there? Uh, you, you never had eyebrows. Oh, okay. So we're all just staring at the fire in silence, thinking about random things. Damn, I need me a four-piece Popeye's combo right now. The, the meaning of life, it, it must be to evolve and become the best person you can be. God damn. Bob's mom is so hot. And as we're just chilling, watching the fire, it was pretty much sending out a smoke signal and anyone in the vicinity probably saw it. And soon we started hearing a siren in the distance. Guys, it's definitely just an ambulance. I mean, I mean, it's getting kind of loud, don't you think? No, 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 we're chilling, we're chilling. Fuck bro, I'm out of here. Yeah, I'm way too high for this right now. So Billy and Bob just leave and I'm thinking, they're just being some scaredy cats. They're gonna come back. It's, it's literally just an ambulance. R right? Man, it, it's getting kind of close. Oh shit, they're definitely coming for me. And then the siren just stops. Oh, I, I guess they're not coming for me. And then I look behind me, and I make direct eye contact with two officers. My heart literally stopped. Oh, you're fucked. Hey! I grabbed the gas and the gas, and with all the adrenaline I had, I literally jumped on the fire, stomped it out, and hauled ass. Hey, get back here! I'm being chased by these two cops, and I am red-handed as fuck. I mean, I'm holding a liter of gasoline, a lighter, and the kush while I'm baked as hell, running from these cops. And they were on my ass, bro, because let's be real, I could have outrun these fat asses any day of the week, but I'm at a major disadvantage here. Like, I have to run carrying the can of gas while I'm zooted, bro. So sheer speed was not gonna do it, but I had to get them off my tail, or, or else I was going to jail. So I take a sharp right, and then I'm faced with these two paths. I hit a quick left. And as soon as I get out of their sight, I slide into these bushes smooth as butter. And I was scared shitless. Man, man I, can't, I can't go to jail. I, I, dro I dropped the soap way too much for all that. Holy shit, they're right there. Where'd he go? Mm, we almost had him. And we would have had him too if your fat ass didn't eat so many damn donuts. Shut up, Robert. 
That's why Dave fucked your wife. As soon as it was clear, I booked it straight to Billy's house. Oh, guys, it, it wasn't an ambulance. No shit. And I think it's safe to say I was paranoid for the rest of the night. Yo, I really appreciate you guys. So I'm going to be following back a bunch of people on my Instagram. So go check it out. Peace. So there are seven stages of being drunk, all of which I've experienced. So you don't have to. <clears throat> Drinking? Uh, aren't you underage? No, I'm 21. Now let's start with stage one, the process. Stage one is one of the most important stages of being drunk. If you've ever heard the saying, trust the process, this fully applies when it comes to drinking. If you don't approach this stage with precision, calculation, and patience, you might accidentally skip straight to stage seven. And trust me, you don't want to skip straight to stage seven. The process is pretty much where you've started drinking, but you don't really feel anything yet. Because when you drink alcohol, it takes time for it to be absorbed into the bloodstream. And some people just don't have the patience to wait and end up overestimating their limit. Oh, uh, I feel fine. Let me take another shot. Stage two is tipsy. Tipsy is where you first start to feel it. It's when the first few shots start to hit and you start to feel a little bit more outgoing and maybe more talkative. At this point, you'll still have your judgment, but I feel like you become a little bit more of a glasses half full kind of person. Walking in a straight line is still easy. Boom, light work. Once the next few shots start to roll in, you'll hit stage three, intoxicated. Once you're intoxicated, some of the dizziness starts to set in. You also start to think less about the words you say. And I'm not gonna lie, at this point, I feel like your confidence peaks. Like when you're at a party and you look in the mirror and see Michael B. Jordan, you know you're at the level of intoxication, bro. And to be honest, for parties, I like to chill at this stage because you've got your confidence, but you still haven't lost your riz. And for reference, at this point, you can still walk in a straight line, but it takes a little bit more focus and effort. Which brings me to stage four, hammered. This is where you start slurring your words. And bro, at this point, walking in a straight line becomes an impossible task. Yo, dude, can you walk this line really quick? Yes. When you're hammered, you start thinking a lot less. You start saying things before you can even think them. And it's important to say, when you're hammered, your judgment cannot be trusted. All ideas become good ideas. Yo, dude, what if we set an orphanage on fire? Bro, that's genius. That's what I'm saying. Uh, what are you guys doing? Nothing. I don't think that was a good idea, bro. Facts. Stage five is stupefied. At this stage, you'll have the brain power of a toaster. And honestly, walking in a straight line isn't even a question anymore. Yo, dude, can you walk this? Once you're stupefied, you're just too far gone. You feel like your head is just spinning over and over. Now, at this stage, I would recommend leaving whatever party or setting you're at because you can't function properly. You'll probably end up regretting some of the shit you say or do the next morning. Now, stage six, wasted. When you're wasted, when you're, when you get wasted, is just regret. Your body is literally fighting for survival. Everything is miserable and you always promise yourself you'll never get to this stage again. But one way or another, it always comes back. Whenever you're at a party, there's always one person who's wasted, and they're hunched over at the toilet just vomiting, bro. And it, it just ruins the night completely. So this might be obvious, but I do not recommend getting wasted. Now, to get to stage 7, you have to do one of three things. First off, you could have not trusted the process at stage 1 and heavily overestimated your limit. Or, you could have been hammered and your judgment was tainted, so you had the idea to take more shots. Remember, all ideas become good ideas. And lastly, you could be going through a serious divorce. And in this case, I'm sorry. I hope she comes back. But stage 7 is blacked out. When you are blacked out, you've lost your consciousness. You're pretty much just slumped out. But your dreams when you're blacked out drunk are always the most random and vivid shit, bro. And once you wake up, Yo, dude, can you walk this line really quick? So, uh, I think it's safe to say that I would strongly not recommend going past stage four. But I'm not gonna lie, I have a few times, and I got lots of crazy stories from them too. 
So let me know in the comments if you want to hear any of these stories. But yeah, I think I should end the video by saying, please drink responsibly. For most of my life, I've known how to swim. But by that, I mean, if my life depended on it, I could swim from one place to another. I don't even know if swim is the right word. Like, if you saw me casually enjoying a little swim at the pool, you'd be like, D -d does he need help? Like, is he drowning? I mean, like, I did take swimming lessons, but I quit at level alligator, bro. I, I never even made it to level one. With that being said, this incident dates way back to when I was in grade four. We were going on a field trip, and of course, it's to the pool. But I'm not stressing. I, I know I safely passed level penguin, so I should be chilling. My whole class and I walk into the entrance of the pool, but before anyone was allowed in the pool, they asked everyone if they knew how to swim. And I thought, we're in grade four, there is no way somebody still doesn't know how to swim. And just as I presumed, nobody needed a life jacket. So me and the gang are swimming around, you know, jumping off the diving boards. Fun stuff for a grade four field trip. But after about an hour, my friends and I are just chilling in the deep end. And that's when I see a kid in my class named Ben on some floaty things coming in our direction. A little backstory about Ben, for as long as I can remember, this dude has been on my nuts. So when I saw this dude coming in my direction, I assumed he just wanted to say hi or something. But as he made his way towards me, I could tell he was struggling. So I swim over to help him out. Oh, hey, Ben. Uh, how are you? This kid jumps off the floaty thing onto me. And this man has the meanest grip on me. Pause. Well, this shit had to be some sort of attempted murder, bro, because he had me in a chokehold and his legs were wrapped around my arms. But they did not prepare me for this shit level alligator. So instantly I start sinking and I hit the bottom of the pool. Keep in mind, Ben is chilling on top of me with his head out of the water this whole time. So I jump off the bottom of the pool just enough to get my head out of the water for a few seconds. <gasps> ben, get off me. And when I look up, I see this dude Ben with the straightest face in the world. Like this motherfucker has no clue I'm out here fighting for my life. And he says in the most monotone voice, I can't swim. Ah, oh, hell nah. I'm trying to fight him off me, but keep in mind my arms are tied up. So I gather all the strength out of my skinny ass grade four legs and I jump just enough to get my head out of the water again. <gasps> Lifeguard, help! Oh, you guys, stop playing around in the pool. That's it. I I'm fucked. I'm dead. And out of sheer anger, I decide, fuck it. If I'm dying, you're dying with me. I duck as far as I can under the water so both me and Ben can't breathe. But I'm running out of air. I start to get lightheaded. Man, that's crazy. This is really how I die, huh? And just as I had lost hope, my main man Bob comes in on some Superman shit, pulls Ben off me, and swims me over to the shallow end. I cough up some water, but eventually I catch my breath. So that's the story of how I almost died. And it's also the story of why I owe my life to Bob. Getting too high and ordering Chinese food three times because you keep forgetting you ordered it is one thing. But being too high in public is just one situation you don't want to be in. Like when you're too high in public, it feels like there's always a spotlight on you. And that all these random people you walk by are staring you down. But whatever you do, you can't make eye contact with anyone or else that person will snatch your soul. If anyone else gets paranoid when they get high, then I know you can relate. I'll be out here fighting demons trying to walk to the gas station like, Okay, relax. You're gonna be okay. The gas station is right there. Holy shit, it's the cops. Th they're after me. Man, something in that gas smokes away all your logic and reasoning. Like, it'll have me jumping from conclusion to conclusion like I'm playing Mario. D did that girl just look at me? Shit. She must think I'm sexy. Wait, wait, no, 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 she, she knows I'm high. Holy shit, she's probably an undercover FBI agent. She's getting back up as I speak. I gotta get the fuck out of here. And sometimes when you're smacked in a public setting, you're just forced to talk to people. Don't make eye contact, 
Don't make eye contact. Hey man, do you know where the Walmart is around here? Wait, fuck. What did he say? He he, he probably just asked how I was doing. Oh, uh, I'm good. How are you? Uh, I'm I'm good. But do you know where the Walmart is? Oh, yep. Yeah, I'm good. Thanks for asking. Phew, good thing I played that one off. Or I mean, you could always just take the good old safe route. Hey man, do you know where the Walmart is? When you get way too baked in public, you also feel super self-conscious about everything. A am I walking weird? H how do I even normally walk? Why am I walking like I just shit my pants? Okay, okay, this feels pretty normal. Wait, am, am I even breathing right? Fuck, now I just turned on manual breathing. Roaming the streets well baked, you'll come across lots of people. But there's just some unspoken connection between two high people. Like, no words have to be said. You see that his eyes are red, and he sees that your eyes are red. You dap each other up out of respect, and you keep it pushing. Now, when you're baked as hell in public, but you're with a group of people who are just as baked as you, it's a lot easier to relax. Because the simple thought that these people look just as stupid as I do. And honestly, at that point, you can just embrace it. Because you're no longer baked, alone, and afraid anymore. Now you can speak your truth. Hey man, do you know where the wall- Hey bro, I'ma stop you right there. I am fucking baked. And therefore, I cannot help you locate anything you may be looking for. And listen, being baked and Mickey D's go hand in hand. The problem is, you have to actually talk to the McDonald's guy to get your food. Like, when I'm baked, I just don't have the brain capacity to communicate what I'm thinking. Shit, I'm probably gonna get a Big Mac. Hi there, what can I get for you? Uh, do, do, you, do you guys have, um, do you guys have burgers? No shit, we got burgers. Yeah, then let me get the the burger, you know, like with the the things, the um, you, you know, I'm, you know what I'm saying, like that, you, yeah. <sighs> Damn, you are fucking stupid, bro. And we already know being zooted at school can either be a rather delightful experience or it could be completely and utterly terrible. Once again, if you tend to get paranoid when you're high. Being at school has to be one of the worst places to be. You'll be out here ducking and dodging the teachers, absolutely shitting the bed on all your tests, and it's just overall gonna be a stressful ass experience. But on the other hand, if you get much more relaxed when you're high, then you get a nice little mood boost. You walk around with your head up and that baked grin on your face. Shit, this was never me, but I know some motherfuckers magically get a better mark on their tests when they're faded. Overall, you're just kind of living life stress-free. I mean, these two experiences are pretty much complete opposites. So I'm not trying to say being baked in public is always going to be a bad experience. But for me, I'd much rather accidentally place three orders of Chinese food from the comfort of my own home. <laughs> Every single person will have a different experience when they get high. And even the same person can have different experiences each time. It can depend on many things, like the strain of the grass, the environment you're in, and overall the type of person you are. But with that being said, I do know some of the most common types of people when they're high. Starting with Paranoid Peter. Paranoid Peter will take a few hits and his brain will go on overdrive. Imagining the worst scenario he could possibly be in. And he'll just slowly convince himself that it's real. Hey, how you doing? Shit, he knows I'm high. He probably knows that I jaywalked last week too. Fuck, I'm going to jail for life. Buddy, are you okay? Fine, I'm high as hell and I, I illegally crossed the road last week. Next up, we got Mary with the munchies. Mary will get zooted and go ham on all the food in the vicinity. She'll have DoorDash, skip the dishes, Uber Eats, knocking on her door like they're the IRS or something. But I'm not gonna lie, I know we've all been there. No, no not with the IRS, I'm talking about the munchies. Because food when you're high simply hits different. You go from just chewing, swallowing, and digesting your food, to dissecting and distinguishing each particular particle of that food. And I don't know why, but your brain never tells you if you're full. So you can just eat food infinitely. Next we got Chill Charlie. Chill Charlie is just so laid back. Once this dude takes a puff, he is just nonchalant. And nothing in the world can make this man start chalanting. Charlie, they found the kids in our basement. Chill out, dude. It's all gonna be alright. Hey, 
Hands behind your back! Yo, calm down. Why are you so aggressive? And of course, we got Sleepy Sam. You see, Sleepy Sam has had a long day at work. He decides what would be a better way to end the day than to light up some Bubba Kush. <laughs> we can't forget about George with the giggles, man. George just be laughing at anything when he's high. And it's the best when you get two high Georges in a room. You could hit George with some devastating news, and there's nothing he can do but laugh. George, I I'm so sorry, man. I, I just crashed your new Bugatti. Honestly, at this point, literally anything can make him laugh. Uh, okay, maybe not anything. Next up, we got Mumbling Martin. Some motherfuckers just be smoking and start to think they're Cardi or something. Like, after a few hits, they start to invent a whole new language. Damn, it's like dead cat pee hit, man. Whoa, wait, what? <laughs> I said dead cat pee hit, man. C can you just speak up a little bit? <laughs> you can't hold me. You can't. Can't tell me. Speak up. And man, we all know a coffin Carl. Yeah, yeah, bro. Can you pass me that grass? <coughs> God damn. God bless America. We got sober Sophia. Yo, Sophia, take a hit. No. And what about immobilized Eric? I don't know if any of y'all have experienced this before, but sometimes Eric be smoking a little too much and it's like his controller just disconnects. Like wherever he smokes, he will be there in the same position for the whole night. Yo, yo bro, we're going home. Ain't no way Eric is still here, bruh. There has to be some sort of brain muscle disconnect when he smokes. Because you could 360 roundhouse this motherfucker and he would still be chilling in the same spot he smoked. That is, until the effect just wears off. And we got Philosopher Phil. Listen, I don't know what Phil smokes, but whatever it is, it seems to rewire his brain and turn him into a modern Aristotle. <sighs> if a time machine is ever made in the future, then it has always existed. Yeah, bro, I, I never thought about it like that. How can you prove to me that you even exist? Uh, I, I don't know, I, I just- Was math discovered? Or was it created? Uh, created- Wait, wait. No, no discover- Are we a body with a mind, or, or just a mind with a body? Hey, bro. I'm way too high for this shit. Listen, I know some of y'all have already gone to school high, but for those of you who haven't, don't do it, bro. I only went to school baked one time in my life, and after that experience, I never did it again. So, this story takes place on your average Wednesday. I was still in grade 10 at this point, but I have to note, I was not a super experienced smoker. However, with that being said, I did have some homies in grade 11 that let's just say they knew what they were doing. But still, my day started off like your average high schooler. Alarm goes off, hit snooze for 15 minutes, get up, stare at the wall for approximately 10 minutes, shower, eat, and head to school. This particular day, I remember being a little bit anxious because I knew I had to present my speech that I had just written the night before. But pff, English is at the end of the day, I'm chilling for now. Plus, my first class is PE. So you know how it goes. I smoked some kids in dodgeball. I went to my next class, got smoked in math. The bell rings and I dip for lunch. Guys, See y'all boys. Guys, the, yeah, the yeah, peace out, man. I, I do. So I link up with the gang for lunch, and we kind of mob around the school for a minute, but we end up just chilling in this forest right outside our school. And this is when one of my experienced friends whips out that Zaza. We'll just call him Jimmy for now. Jimmy just asks everyone, are you dudes trying to smoke? Yeah, for sure. Hell yup. Nah, I'm, I'm all good. At first, I was the only person who didn't want to. But as I sat there, feeling the vibes, in taking the positive energy from the surrounding vegetation, I came to the conclusion the vibes were right. It was just me and my trusted homies secluded in a peaceful area, 
I mean, what's the worst that could happen, right? And man, when it comes to drinking, I'm a certified heavyweight champion. But for whatever reason, when it came to smoking, I had the tolerance of a newborn baby. But then again, what would I look like taking this lil ass inhale? So I did what any dumbass individual would do. Yo, look at Chains. Yo, chill, dude. <coughs> Damn. So my friends are low key hyping me up. And I'm out here thinking, I am such a cool guy. I am, I am literally that guy. I'm literally that guy. But much like everything else, everyone forgot about it in five minutes. But I'm still left with all this tetrahydrocannabinol compounds waiting to alter my neural chemistry. So as we're walking back to the school, the THC raids my brain like the FBI. FBI open up! And I just eat the ground, bro. Had me looking like my controller just disconnected. And my friends just look at each other like, fuck, maybe you should just go home, bro. Yeah, dude. There's no way you'll be able to go to class like this. So we make our way over to this bench outside and I'm weighing out my options. I'm trying to find the best scenario to get out of this alive. I narrowed it down to roughly two options. I can either go home, get whooped by my mom and get grounded for another year and a half or I could thug it out, just go to class, running the risk that my teacher might find out I'm baked. So me and my friends are brainstorming, using the good old pros and cons method, going home. Pros, cons, I will get whooped. Staying at school, pros, cons, I might get whooped. Staying at school it is. The bell rings, my friends wish me good luck, but my next class was science and I had the number one homie in that class. Bob. So Bob is just being a W man's. He's absolutely carrying me in this group science experiment while I'm literally passed out sleeping on the desk. Bell rings, Bob wishes me good luck and dips. Now I'm all on my own, but I just got one more class. I'm almost done. What class do I even have again? Oh, oh yeah, English, right? So I make my way to English. I sit down. All right. So today we're doing our speech. speeches. Speeches. And my English teacher was the type of teacher who loves to catch people lacking and just put them on the spot. So of course, he sees me on another planet and decides to call me out. Uh, Chains, uh, how about you go first? Uh, I'm not, I'm not prepared. Just get up there, bud. Uh, okay. All right, whenever you're ready. <clears throat> Ch Chains, you, you can start now. Uh, okay. So, so my, my speech, it, like, it's about... The topic of the, of the speech, it's dinosaurs. So, t t t t so sorry, sorry. T t t t Tyrannosaurus Rex has short arms. <clears throat> yeah, it changed. Don't worry about it. You can sit down. You, you can just go tomorrow. It's all right. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Yeah, man. This is why you don't show up to school high, bro. Oh Yo. shit! Ooh. Yeah. Damn! That's why you don't Damn. mess with me. Yo, I'm chill. Jordan Johnson. Uh, Mr. Johnson, why did you beat Kyle's ass? M M Mr. Principal, I never touched Kyle. I in fact, I've never seen this kid in my entire life. <clears throat> How do you presume he received a concussion, two broken ribs, a black eye, a broken nose, and a dislocated shoulder? I, I mean, he must have fallen down the stairs or something. Okay, Mr. Johnson. How do you explain this? That's why you don't mess with me. I'm Jordan Johnson. What? I, 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 mean, I mean, you got the wrong Jordan Johnson. Then, uh, what, what happened to your knuckles there? Shit, th these ain't even my knuckles. Listen, I am not one to condone violence. But I'm not gonna lie. School fights are a major part of the high school experience. I mean, there's something about a good old school brawl that just boosts students' morale. Like, there is nothing that gets you through the rest of the day like some kid getting his ass beat in front of the entire school. And truthfully, it's just a community building experience because it gives everyone something to talk about. Yo, did you see the fight? Yeah, bro, Kyle got his shit rocked. Wait, are you guys talking about the fight? Yeah, bro. Man, Kyle got fucked up, dude. Overall, in school fights, everyone wins. Like, the fighter gets some respect and the crowd gets some entertainment. It's a win-win. What, what about, what about me? 
<clears throat> but tell me why when a fight breaks out, the entire school will be recording, but not one person can get a good video. It's like when a fight breaks out, every motherfucker recording starts having severe hand spasms. I mean, as the person recording the fight, you literally have one job. To record the fight. Damn, I just missed it. What happened? Oh, well, lucky for you, I recorded the entire thing from start to finish on my brand new Samsung. Check it out. Uh, did, did anyone else record the fight? Oh, shit, yeah, I did on my, my brand new iPhone 14 that actually records in 4K. Okay, bet. Ooh. Oh, damn. Let's go, JJ. That's why you don't mess with me. But bro, there's, there's just a video of your face for eight minutes straight. And watching some of these fights are funny as hell. Because some motherfuckers will come in swinging like KSI. Some motherfuckers are out here thinking they're Daniel LaRusso. And some motherfuckers should just not be fighting. Which is honestly the best part. Because where else could you catch a 6'5", 250-pound big body scrapping some 5'2 nerd? Like, the UFC would never let that shit slide. Plus, you get to watch it all for free. But me personally, I've never gotten into a school fight. But don't get me wrong, if someone wanted to catch these hands, I could hit them with the little knuckle sandwich if you know what I mean. But truth be told, I could never lose a fight. N not because I know how to fight, but because for Bob, shit was on sight. And trust me, you don't fuck with Bob. Bob's got a better record than Floyd Mayweather. And I even heard one time he got into a little altercation with Mike Tyson. All I'ma say is, <clears throat> he dealt with him. But with that being said, we all know that one kid in school who was born to simply beat people's ass. Like this dude's life purpose was to run people's fade. And of course, I had someone like this at my school. He was the type of dude who had nothing to lose. So he would instigate a fight wherever he could. We'll just call him Jordan. And honestly, he was holding a solid record. I mean, he was probably 12 and 0. But one day, Jordan picked on the wrong kid. Hey nerd, take off those stupid glasses. And Bob was a man of little words, so Jordan's buffoonery did not phase him. Hey nerd, I, I said take off those stupid glasses. Hey, stop ignoring me. And without saying a word, Bob just ended Jordan's whole career. And ever since that day, nobody messed with Bob. That's why you don't Damn. mess with me, yo. I'm Jordan <laughs> Johnson. Man, family functions have the weirdest dynamic, bro. Like, how have you known these people your entire life, but have still never gone past a surface level conversation? I mean, let me know if it's just my family, but every function is the same. The whole gang links up, and everyone just asks the most generic small talk questions to each other. Hey, uh, how, how's that new place you bought? Oh, yeah, you know, it, it's good. And how's the kids doing? Oh, you know, they're they're good. Oh, and how, how's the wife? Man, fuck your wife. I don't want to hear any of these NPC conversations, bro. And let me know if I'm getting too specific here, but what about that one uncle who goes by the name of either Bob, Jerry, or Dave? And this dude will just always be saying the most out-of-pocket things imaginable. Oh, how's your daughter Jane doing? Oh, Jane's always been hot, eh? Bob, she's 15! This uncle be at the family function thinking it's Coachella or something. Bob, another beer's a little bit excessive, don't you think? Yeah, football! I'm the youngest person in my whole family, which for whatever unspoken reason, it just means everyone has the go-ahead to flame the living oh, shit out of me. Hey, Chain, still no girlfriend, huh? I guess you're not too good with the ladies there. <laughs> but I make one joke back and I'm the bad guy. You don't seem too good with the ladies yourself, seeing as your wife just divorced you and she took the kids with her. <laughs> am, am I right? Not only do they feel free to roast your whole Boy, existence you simply because you were born last, they unanimously decide you will be everyone's personal butler. Hey bud, go get another beer for me. Alright, yeah, yeah, for sure. Thanks. Now you better get started on mowing that lawn. Grass isn't gonna cut itself, am I right? Oh my god, bro. And coming into these family functions, you would think your mom is your closest ally. But as soon as she gets the chance, she will expose your biggest secret for a little bit of parent clout. 
You guys will never guess what I found under Chain's bed yesterday. Oh my god, what is it? Yeah, tell what? us. What? No way. Sometimes when my family tries to make small talk with me, they just miss the boat completely. So, buddy, how's those swimming lessons going for you? The, the, the swimming lessons I took when I was five? Yeah, 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 right, those ones. Uh, they're, they're good. I, I f finished them a little while ago. Oh, is, is that right? Uh, good for you, buddy. And bro, don't get me started on those recycled ass jokes. Well, looks like you got your workout for the day. Ah, oh, looks like you've gotten so tall. What are you feeding this kid, am I right? Oh, Bob, I, th I think you got some food in your beard. Oh, don't worry, uh, I'm saving it for later. Ah, oh, good one, oh, Bill. Oh, Bob, he's so funny. Thank you, thank you. I guess everyone at the function must have Alzheimer's or something. Because these jokes will have them cracking up like they haven't heard the same joke the past 15 functions. <sighs> But cousins, man. Cousins are the saving grace of family functions. Without cousins, you would have no choice but to participate in the tomfoolery of small talk. I'd be walking in the function just praying to see that one cousin. And bro, I have a family function survival tip for you. You always have to stay within arm's reach of either your siblings or your cousins. Because whenever some bullshit goes down, you just give each other the look and flee the scene. And because when you get caught lacking on your own at the function, you get jumped. Metaphorically speaking, of course. <laughs>